we have already finished uh, three modules starting with the basics of probability then the second model is a random variable and the third model is a moments and inequalities now we are moving into the fourth model that is called the standard distributions in this model we are going to discuss various uh, standard distributions which includes uh, standard discrete uh, random variables distributions and uh, distributions of standard uh, continuous type random variables standard means uh, whenever we solve the real world problems some distributions uh, comes very often so those distribution we call it as a common distribution or standard distributions or uh, frequently we come across the same distribution again and again so those distribution has some name therefore we call those distribution as a standard distributions or uh, some common uh, distributions so first let me discuss a few standard common discrete type uh, random variables whose uh, distributions and also the moments in particular for mean and variance and similarly we will discuss uh, later some common uh, continuous type random variables and uh, their distributions also the mean and uh, variance for those distributions then we will discuss some of the problems which has uh, the underlying distributions so in this model we are going to make a uh, three lectures <coughs> that is uh, the title of the model is uh, standard distributions in this first we are going to discuss some common discrete distributions second we are going to discuss some common continuous distributions third we are going to discuss some applications of random variable that means uh, we are going to discuss uh, some problems uh, which are related to these uh, common discrete and continuous distributions let's start with uh, some common discrete distributions the first one which we are going to discuss that is called a constant random variable a random variable x is said to be a it's a discrete type random variable x is a discrete type random variable is said to be a constant random variable whenever the probability mass function of the random variable x takes a one single value a with probability 1 a can be any in the real that means uh, the whole unit mass is accumulated at the point x is equal to a that means uh, in a random experiment you may have a sample space with a finite elements or countably infinite or uncountably many elements the way the real valued function is mapped from omega to r it is a many to one function therefore the probability of x is equal to a is nothing but the collection of all possible outcomes 
which gives the value a that is uh, this is omega it has so many elements. So, the mapping uh, from omega to r at the point a for all the points for all possible outcomes the mapping is uh, a where a is belonging to real line. That means, uh, the probability of x equal to a is nothing but uh, it is a probability of uh, p of omega from the Kolmogorov axiomatic definition we know that the p of omega is 1. Therefore, uh, it is going to be a probability of x equal to a is equal to 1 that means, uh, all other points if you go for the inverse image whose uh, mass is going to be 0. You can draw the CDF of uh, this random variable. Suppose uh, a takes uh, some negative value, then the f of uh, the CDF is going to be 0 till a at the point a it becomes 1 and it will be 1 till infinity. That means, uh, the CDF uh, has uh, only one jump and the jump value is 1 it satisfies all the properties of the CDF. Uh, therefore, you can conclude uh, this is the CDF of the random variable and uh, if you draw the probability mass function for this uh, discrete type random variable at x is equal to a it has the value 1 and all other point and uh, the mass is 0. That means, uh, the whole unit mass is uh, accumulated at only one point therefore, uh, it is called a constant random variable. That means, uh, any constant can be represented as a random variable with the probability 1 at that point. It is a very important result uh, the CDF has a only one jump and the probability mass function is at only one point with the value 1 otherwise it is 0. Therefore, uh, the probability p of x can be written in a easy way. It is equal to 1 when x is equal to a, it is equal to 0 when x is not equal to a. So, this is a probability mass function and this is a CDF and this diagram gives the probability mass function in a graphical form. Now, we will go to the second one that is called a Bernoulli distribution. A yeah, discrete type random variable is said to be a Bernoulli distributed random variable when the probability mass function takes a value 0 is 1 minus p and the probability of x takes a value 1 that is p where p is lies between 0 to 1. Otherwise, it is 0 that means, the probability mass function p of x it takes a value p of x is p when x takes a value 1 and 1 minus p when x takes a value 0 otherwise, it is 0. You can draw the CDF uh, this uh, discrete type random variable x takes a value 0. So, till 0 it is 0 at 0 there is a jump of a height 1 minus p at the point 1 it has another jump that jump value is p therefore, uh, it touches 1. That means, uh, for uh, this discrete type random variable the CDF has a two jumps, one jump is at 0 with the jump value 1 minus p and the next jump at the point 1 with the jump value p. Therefore, this is a discrete type random variable and you can draw the probability mass function also in the similar way. So, at x is equal to 0 the height is 1 minus p.
height 1 minus p at x is equal to 1 it has a jump p. It depends on uh, p is going to be less than 1 by 2 or greater than 1 by 2 accordingly you will have a 1 minus p with the shorter height and the p is taller comparing to the mass at the point 0. Whenever the random experiment has a two possibilities, we call it as a Bernoulli trial. Suppose uh, you treat uh, one possibility as a success and the other possibility as a failure, then we usually denote the success probability with the probability p and the failure probability with the 1 minus p, then that type of trial is called a Bernoulli trials. A discrete type random variable with the probability mass function of this form, we call it as a that random variable is Bernoulli distributed. Always uh, the p has to be open interval 0 to 1. If uh, p is equal to 0 or 1, then uh, it becomes a constant. Therefore, uh, it is has to be always the open interval 0 to 1 will which gives a Bernoulli distributed random variable x. Now, we will go to the third one that is a binomial distribution. When we say the given random variable is a binomial distributed, this also discrete type. Whenever a discrete type random variable whose probability mass function is of the form p of x that is equal to n c x p power x 1 minus p power n minus x when x takes a value 0, 1, 2 and so on till n otherwise it is 0 then we call or we say the random variable which is a discrete type random variable has binomial distributed random variable. Since this is a probability mass function this is always greater than or equal to 0 and if you make a summation over uh, x from 0 to n that is going to be 1 and uh, here the p value is always uh, lies between 0 to 1 and n is the positive integer. The probability mass function of the form n c x uh, p power x 1 minus p power n minus x. Once you know the value of a p and n, you know the probability distribution of uh, this random variable. Therefore, we call uh, n and p are the parameters of the binomial distribution. So, we usually write the notation x follows, this uh, tilde means uh, follows, capital B that means for the binomial distribution and here the parameters are uh, n and p, therefore, n comma p. So, whenever we write uh, x tilde capital B within bracket n comma p that means uh, the random variable x follows binomial distribution with the parameters n and p. If you supply the value of n which is a positive integer and uh, small p which lies between open interval 0 to 1 then you are uh, known with the probability distribution of this random variable. The probability mass function has uh, this form. So, you can make out uh, the CDF of uh, binomial distribution has a uh, n plus 1 jump points and the corresponding jump values are uh, n c x p power x 1 minus p power n minus x. So, this is a discrete type random variable. So, you can uh, <coughs> see the CDF uh, at x is equal to 0, it is a first jump, at x is equal to 1, it has the second jump, at x is equal to 2, it has another jump and so on, at uh, x is equal to n, it has the last jump and which gives the value 1. So, this CDF is the 
right continuous function with the n plus 1 jump points and the jump values are the n c x p power x 1 minus p power n minus x. As a special case when n is equal to 1 then the same random variable is going to be say it as a binomial distribution with the parameter 1 comma p that is nothing but a Bernoulli distribution. When n is equal to 1 you will end up a binomial distribution. So, the probability mass function is going to be at x is equal to 0 it is 1 minus p at x is equal to 1 the probability mass is a p therefore, it is a Bernoulli distributed random variable. One can create a binomial distribution with the help of a Bernoulli distribution that is a whenever you have a random variable second remark we can treat this as the first remark. The second remark whenever you have a Bernoulli distributed random variable with the parameter p for n such random variables. If you create a one random variable as a sum of x i is equal to 1 to n that means a each random variable is a Bernoulli that means either it takes a value 0 or 1 and if you create a random variable of a sum of a n such Bernoulli distributed random variable and you can make the one assumption all are independent random variables. In detailed what is the meaning of those n random variables are independent and what are all the properties going to be satisfied that will be discussed later, but now you, you can keep the assumption x i s are independent random variable that means, it is a they are mutually independent random variable. Then one can conclude the capital X is a summation of x i s. So, now the possible values of x is going to be 0 to n because each x i s takes a value 0 or 1 therefore, sum of n such Bernoulli distributed random variable the possible values are going to be x and you can get the probability mass function it is a x takes a value small x that is going to be n c x p power x 1 minus p power n minus x when x takes a value 0 or 1 or 2 so on till n. That means, uh, suppose uh, you say that uh, x takes a value small x that means, uh, out of n such Bernoulli trials you are getting x with the probability p and the remaining n minus x you got the failure that is 1 minus p power n minus x with the possibilities of n c x ways. Therefore, the probability of x equal to small x is going to be n c x p power x 1 minus p power n minus x. So, this is going to be a probability mass function of binomial distribution. Therefore, one can conclude if you have a n independent Bernoulli distributed random variables with the same parameter p for the Bernoulli distribution, then the sum of a n independent Bernoulli distributed random variable becomes a binomial distribution with the parameters n and p. So, we can say x follows a binomial distribution with the parameters n comma p. So, this is a way one can create the binomial distribution with the help of a Bernoulli distribution. As a third remark we can go for finding what is the MGF of binomial distribution. Suppose x follows the binomial distribution with the parameters n and p you can find MGF of binomial distribution that is nothing but expectation of e power x times t that is same as 
since it is a discrete type random variable. So, it is going to be summation e power x small x t and the probability of x takes a value small x and the possible values of x are from 0 to n. So, you substitute all the values that is uh, x equal to 0 to n e power x times t and the uh, probability of x equal to small x is uh, n c x p power x 1 minus p power n minus x. Now, also you do not need to expand and uh, simplify and so on. You can keep uh, p power x and e power x t together. Therefore, this is nothing but uh, summation x is equal to 0 to n n c x e power t times p whole power x and 1 minus p power n minus x. Therefore, the MGF of uh, binomial distribution is uh, p e power t plus 1 minus p the whole power n using a binomial summation you can get a MGF of a binomial distribution is p times e power t plus 1 minus p power n. What is the use of MGF? Once you know the MGF, you can get the all the moments by successive derivative. If you want to find out only mean, you can use the mean uh, definition and you can get the mean. Suppose you need many moments, then better you can find the MGF first then successive derivative and I have already explained uh, from the moment generating function how to get the moments of order n. So, you can use that and find out the uh, first order moment, second order moment, uh, any nth order moment. So, in particular if you want to find out the mean of this random variable, if you want to find out the mean of uh, this random variable that is nothing but if you use the derivative one, derivative of uh, mgf with respect to t, then substitute uh, t equal to 0 will give the mean of the binomial distributed random variable. So, by doing the derivative and so on, you can get the value n into p. This is a one way of finding mean of the binomial distribution or you can find out uh, from the scratch that is a summation that is a summation of a x times a probability of x equal to x where x takes the value 0 to n. So, that is same as a summation x equal to 0 to n x times n c x p power x 1 minus p power n minus x you can cancel x with n c x uh, one term therefore, you will get a factorial n divided by n minus x factorial and uh, x minus 1 factorial. So, now you can keep uh, 1 n and 1 p outside therefore, the simplified quantity becomes uh, n minus 1 c x minus 1 p power x minus 1 and 1 minus p power n minus x. So, that is nothing but uh, that is nothing but uh, p plus uh, 1 minus p power n minus 1 and you know that that value is 1 therefore, this is going to be n into p. So, there are two ways you can find out the expectation either from the scratch by the definition method or by the MGF method. The same way one can compute the variance. So, the variance of x that is going to be either by using the definition for that you have to find out the expectation of x square and already you know the value of expectation of x you can substitute you can get the value or you can do the second derivative of the MGF then through that you can get the variance. So, if you do the little simplification, you can get the variance of x is going to be n into p into 1 minus p. For that, you can do the other method that is 
you can find uh, expectation of uh, x square that is nothing but uh, second derivative of mgf of x with respect to t twice then substitute uh, t equal to 0 that some simplification will give the value that is n into n minus 1 p square plus n p. So, once you know the expectation of x square and substitute in the variance uh, formula that is uh, n into n minus 1 p square plus n into p minus n p the whole square. So, you simplify that you will get the value that is uh, n into p into 1 minus p. So, this is a way one can get the variance of x for the binomial distributed random variable. There is another observation if you draw the probability mass function of a binomial distribution for n is equal to x is equal to 0 you will have some height for x is equal to 1 you will have another height for x is equal to 2 you will have a more height and so on then it will be keep decreasing so this is based on the value of p you will have a increasing for the different values of x then decrease for p is equal to less than of you will have a more increase in the first half then it goes decrease for p is greater than 1 by 2 you will have a less heights in the beginning and more heights in the second half if p is equal to 1 by 2 then you will have a very symmetric of increasing and decreasing over 0 to n and for n is equal to even you will have a two heights for n is equal to odd you will have only one height that is the way the values are going to be keep increasing then it will decrease. I have just drawn one diagram for probability mass function for some n and some p. The importance of the CDF graph is from the finite number of data and if you draw the cumulative distribution graph if that graph is same as the CDF of a binomial distribution then one can conclude the data follows a binomial distribution. Not only from the CDF one can do the observation from the probability mass function also. That means if you draw the histogram of the values of the data over 0 to n and the probability the histogram look like the probability mass function at uh, some points if it is almost same then you can conclude that, that data also follows binomial distribution. Therefore, one should always know the CDF and the probability mass function for a discrete type uh, random variable. Similarly, for a continuous type random variable one should know the CDF uh, as well as the probability density function of a continuous type random variable. So, both the things are very useful when you have a data in the first then you can identify what could be the distribution.